Oracle Chairman Larry Ellison discussed the transformative potential of artificial intelligence in healthcare. And this happens in a meeting at the White House, which also featured SoftBank CEO Masayoshi Son and OpenAI CEO Sam Altman. Ellison emphasized the incredible potential of artificial intelligence in cancer care. Now, what he does is he envisions literally a future where early detection will be possible, where personalized cancer vaccines will be possible, and there will be rapid production of these vaccines, which could all become a reality once things are set rolling within a very limited period of time, is what Ellison actually said. And this vision represents the immense promise of AI for the future of medicine. For the first time, somebody has spelled it out in these terms, which is why it is making big news across the globe, especially in the field of medicine and healthcare. But here today, I want to understand the potential of AI in detecting early can cancer. What exactly is the technology that could be set into motion that could be deployed to detect cancer. To help us understand that, I have Kanish Gaur, who is a renowned cybersecurity uh, expert. He's well known. Uh, to, in fact, he talks a lot about these issues on various networks. Uh, let me welcome Kanish uh, to the program. Very good evening, Kanish. Thank you for joining us. Good to have you with us. Let's start uh -huh. then the conversation Yeah, with this point that I wanted to raise with you about uh, the promise of AI, we've been hearing this a lot since the advent of AI, right? That it will be able to make tremendous uh, strides, as it were, in the area of healthcare. But cancer, that's the big one. And AI can detect early cancer. Let's first focus on that. How will it do that? See, uh, AI could be used for identifying, you know, the fragmented cells uh, you know, the tiny tumors through which cancer propagates. Uh, using AI-based systems, you could do blood tests, which could be used for finding cancer at a very early stage. The biggest issue with cancer is today that it doesn't get detected. Yeah. If you start using AI, you could mm -hmm. identify the cancerous cells and they could be gene sequenced to create personalized tail tailored programs. Uh, so this approach would drastically increase the survival rates by diagnosing cancer at a much early stage and mm -hmm. be a leapfrog in preventive healthcare. While we are talking about uh, today using uh, chemotherapy as a mean, which is more detective than when preventive control, what mm -hmm. Larry was explaining is primarily preventive healthcare, where you identify the cancerous tumors. Uh, you know, using AI, uh, you and then using the mRNA vaccines that could be developed robotically within 48 hours for rapid treatment and precise advice to the person who's been detected with cancer. So we are talking mm -hmm. about using AI for immunotherapy, which is bridging the gap between cutting edge technology and acting in favor of life saving medical care. There are two things you are saying here that I find interesting. First, that within 48 hours, you are going to develop a personalized vaccine. These are very big, uh, you know, hopes, so to speak, that people will now bank upon. Because personalized vaccine is not something we have heard of. Vaccine, by definition, is something that is produced in bulk. It's like a community medicine. Now you're telling us that literally uh, studying of those specifics will be possible of an individual the level and extent of the cancer, as it were. And then, in a customized way, you will have a vaccine produced within the next 48 hours to start the treatment. Did I understand that correctly? Is that how absolutely, it will work? Absolutely. Absolutely. So rather than going for a generic mass treatment where we use chemotherapy as a means, which is quite painful for patients, we are talking about personalized care and detection and screening using AI. So leveraging AI, you could identify the cells which are 
going to get cancerous in a later stage and then perform gene sequenced uh, therapies and accordingly create the personalized vaccines which are going to be focused on the mRNA. Uh, we have seen mRNA based vaccines being produced for COVID uh, some point of time back. So this is a uh, next step where the yeah. this is not when the malignancy actually starts. You're saying this is when there is a possibility of malignancy that AI comes in, detects the possibility of it, and gives you a vaccine to prevent things from shaping up towards cancer. That's what we are That's, saying here. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is more working towards immunotherapy, where you mm -hmm. make the person's immune system much more robust and that can only be done if the medicine is given in a timely manner and the focus is mm -hmm. on those cells which are going to get impacted now that is where ai comes into the picture in a big way uh, that's why white house underscores the critical use of ai in reshaping global healthcare we have seen that uh, united states just moved out of the world healthcare organization where yes, world healthcare organization organization has been the major uh, funder of vaccines globally for diseases which are you know causing death uh, cancer being one of them now mm. it is trying to focus on its own ecosystem and come up with alternative programs uh, and this is one such program where 500 uh, a billion is being sanctioned with uh, use of oracle with use uh, from SoftBank Holdings and uh, companies like uh, you know the the the, Ch the Chat GPT founding company uh, right now, Open AI. So Open that's AI. really the focus right now for taking the stress from the challenges which the U.S. healthcare system is facing. Uh, right mm -hmm. now, their focus is to solve for the U.S. Uh, look more internally and then look rest of the world that has been the new strategy but, but let's, let's be very clear then Tanish. it's not cancer cure it's primarily cancer detection so you know sometimes when we want to write a headline the temptation is to write cancer cure and then you know a lot of that uh, sort of a what do you call it reaction comes in as if the much awaited cancer cure is now here but you know you have given us the clarity that it is actually we are talking about detection. We are talking about initiating treatment at a stage where cancer does not even shape up. So this is what uh, you have uh, Mr. Larry, Larry Ellison, who's quoted as this, which we are discussing right now and putting out the quote so our viewers can understand the context. What he says is if you can do it using AI, you can do early cancer detection with a blood test and using AI to look at the blood test. Very simple blood test is all you would require, Kanish, if I'm understanding it correctly, to get a cancer detection done. You know, earlier we used to think that this blood and urine test that we keep doing, the big ones don't get detected in any of these tests. But now that will change. Absolutely. So let me add on to what I have explained earlier, how AI is going to be used. So today, AI-powered blood test would be done. So you have liquid biopsies which are non-invasive and cost-effective and highly sensitive way to identify cancer early. So you would have liquid biopsies done and then real-time analysis being performed where AI quickly processes vast amount of genetic and molecular data providing rapid diagnostic insights that could help identify the impact the patient might have, right? And then now, according to this analysis, doctors would be in a position to provide vaccine, which is mRNA based vaccines, which is gaining prominence post COVID and AI can help automate the process of design and synthesis of this vaccine. And then you would have robotic process, uh, which is again AI driven to produce these vaccines and deliver within 48 hours of tumor detection. So this is more of personalized therapy using AI that we are working towards. Now this could also be fundamentally move forward where you could have accelerated drug design and vaccine development where AI could fundamentally change the speed and cost of drug and vaccine development. So first is you could set up virtual clinical trials where AI models can simulate clinical trials, 
predict drug efficacy. It could also use optimized uh, methods for saying how much of dose needs to be given at what point of time. And for looking at symptoms, AI could play out a big role. Uh, the second part is using predictive analytics where you could look at historical data, data which has come out from the patients in the past, and then AI can help identify patterns and correlate the human research which were traditionally missed out a lot of times. This will help in streamlining the drug discovery process. And then it could be used for producing vaccines at a larger scale. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this is why this is big is, you know, for a number of reasons. Of course, uh, cancer uh, is one of those things that immediately draws a lot of relatability. Every family and every individual perhaps knows someone who has fallen victim to this uh, disease. But uh, at the moment, when you are saying that, you know, this will be a breakthrough. Now, at what stage of what stage are we in how soon can this happen and how exactly because you see what happens is uh countries do like to appropriate it all for like us like you said have withdrawn from who now it will be entirely us dependent or can in india also simultaneously or anywhere in the world this process can now start see it is al allowing ai integration with healthcare that's one of the key things. When we talk about integrating AI with healthcare, there are three challenges which come into the question. The first is data privacy challenges, where the people who are undergoing treatment, they would allow this to happen to them. They would allow their samples to be collected. Now, that's something which is there. So you have to obtain consent. So data protection and privacy are one of the key aspects. The second is ensuring that the AI modules are fine-tuned to prevent any yeah. kind of biases or disparities in kind of outcome. So you have to ensure that the AI is bias free. And the third is the regulatory hurdles. When you're trying to use AI, what model of AI are you going to use? And whether the government is going to allow use of that AI based models. Today, we see two kinds of AI being developed. One is commercial AI with open AI coming into the picture. The other is open source AI. Now open source AI is free to use. So you have Meta, Lama, Claude, uh, those are some of the open source AI, but how reliable can open source AI be? Can that be subjected to bias? That's something which is need of the hour. So globally, you have AI safety institutes being set up for regulating the AI and also looking at the bias which AI could come into the picture. Hence, moving forward, it is still, I would say, some time before we get into actual use of AI because we have to take care of these three hurdles which I, uh, I have just read with you. That those are very important points. Quick last question then. The majority of cancers, maybe the most deadly ones. In fact, I have a very close family member who I lost to uh, a brain tumor, which is called the glioblastoma, uh, GBM. You know, that's a kind of uh, a, brain, a very, uh, you could say, lethal, uh, fatal tumor. And uh, what we were told, and on this I'm speaking from personal experience, is that it's stage three, stage four, actually. So which means the person had no symptoms. The person was operating like any other human being, unless one fine day, this deadly discovery comes and shatters your life to say that you are at stage four and you only have now so much time to live. Will that change? That will change significantly because AI would allow medicines to be more accurate, more faster and more accessible. So we are moving to the era of healthcare innovation, where with continuous advancements in AI and robotics, the treatment would be more personalized than generic. So you would see rapid improvement and effectiveness of the treatments which would be given to people. Fundamentally, each individual is different and how their body reacts to different kinds of tumors and cancers is very different. So the generic medicines which have been given so far will eventually die down and we will see more personalized healthcare being provided based on people's genetic sequence, based on their DNA, based on uh, you know how their body has been found, based is the test which AI conducts. Mm -hmm. So this, of course, uh, is a quantum leap, I would say. It would give hope to a lot of families, also those who run the risk of cancer. 
because of a close family member having uh, cancer or having a cancer history in the family, it gives hope that they can go for these tests which can detect things early and perhaps with just a prick of a vaccine you are prevented and you are uh, you know sort of insulated from the disease taking shape. What could be better news than that? But at this moment, of course, we are only talking about investments to happen, which the announcement has been made. We are yet to see one case where this has actually happened. And when that happens, we'll probably have more conversations around this. But for now, thank you so much, Kanish Gaur, for joining us and giving thank us you, the honey. opportunity. Well, we continue to track topics which are of interest to you. Cancer cure is one such issue which everybody wants to know more about. And we thought we should have this conversation to understand if technology can bring us some hope for early detection. And it seems now with AI being here, there is hope. Thanks for watching.